Art Goes to School of Delaware Valley. This educational program is brought to you by Art Goes to School, making fine art accessible to elementary school students since 1962. Today we'll be learning about one of the elements of art, lines. Are you an artist? If you can draw a line, you are. Lines are the beginning of every artwork. Lines can stand tall and grab your attention or lie flat to show stillness. Lines can show movement and direction too. Bouncing, wiggling, gliding, skipping. Lines can show how you feel. Strong with thick lines or peaceful with thin lines. Many artists sketch or do a line drawing before they start painting. Here we see a pencil sketch done in 1888 by Vincent van Gogh of the chair in his room in France. He used this drawing to help him figure out the best way to create the final painting of the chair. Understanding the reasons artists use all different kinds of lines in their artwork is very important. According to German artist Paul Klee, a line is a dot that went for a walk. So let's pick up a pencil and a piece of paper and teach your dot a few tricks. You can practice drawing the different types of lines as we explore them together. Are you ready? In art, there are all kinds of lines. They can be thick or thin. Vertical lines are straight up and down. Diagonal lines slant in any direction. Horizontal lines are straight from left to right. Here we see an illustration of The Real Princess by artist Edmund Dulac from the fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen's The Princess and the Pea. Dulac was a French-British magazine and book illustrator and stamp designer. He studied law but later turned to the study of art. His most famous works of art include beautiful illustrations for books like The Arabian Nights and Sleeping Beauty. An illustrator uses pictures to help the reader better understand the story. According to the story, to prove she was a real princess, a pea was placed under 20 mattresses. Only a real princess would be able to feel a pea through such a quantity of bedding. For the real princess illustration, the artist used special lines to give you an idea of just how tall her bed appeared. So what do you notice first in the painting? Why? The bedposts are vertical lines. They capture your attention and draw your eye up to the ceiling. The bottom mattresses lie flat or horizontal, but they become more diagonal as they stack higher and higher. Why did the artist use diagonals in the painting? Hint, they point up too. This is an oil painting on burlap fabric called Going to Church by African-American artist William H. Johnson. He used a primitive style of painting with a folk style, bright colors, and two-dimensional figures. His artwork told the story of life in Harlem, the South, and the military. A huge collection of his paintings are in the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. The artist shows movement and direction through the use of diagonal lines, the oxen's legs, reins, and the thick brown lines on the green hill. The tall, straight, vertical lines of the people command attention as the most important figures in the painting. The blue buildings and trees give a sense of distance. Horizontal lines, the blue fence rails and the clouds in the sky frame the image and give it a sense of calm. Compare the lines used in these two paintings, thick or thin, vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. Would either of the paintings tell the same story if the artist used only flat, quiet, horizontal lines? Here are more lines to practice. Some lines in art are wavy, zigzag, or even curly. Warrior Spirit by Robert Freeman. This Louis Seno Santi Native American artist captured the culture and spirit of his people through his beautiful paintings, sculptures, and murals. He never attended art school, but he was very talented. 
His murals are on the walls of the Los Angeles County Library, and his artwork is in a number of private and public collections around the entire world. How does this artist show movement? The wavy and zigzag lines make your eyes travel up and down all over the painting, almost as if you were running with the horses. How are these horses different from the oxen in the last painting? Which line, diagonal or wavy, shows movement best? How many horses do you see? What do you hear? Print Gallery, Lithograph by Maurits Cornelius Escher. Escher was a Dutch graphic artist known for his mathematically inspired artwork. These feature impossible images, explorations of infinity, and architecture. During his life, Escher made 443 lithographs, woodcuts, and wood engravings. He did over 2,000 drawings and sketches. Escher loved math. His artwork used mathematical formulas for creating amazing images. This artwork shows a man in a gallery viewing an image of a seaport. And among the buildings in the seaport is the very gallery in which he is standing. Why did the artist bend the straight vertical and horizontal lines of the building into waves and curves? Compare and contrast these two images. How are they the same? And how are they different? It's time to pick up your pencil again. Some lines are made with dots, dashes, and crisscrosses. Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. This Dutch artist was one of the most well-known post-impressionist artists. Color and the expression of emotion through color was very important to him. In just over 10 years, he created about 2,100 artworks, including 860 oil paintings. Starry Night came from his imagination. None of the scenery matches the actual landscape he painted. Van Gogh used thick dots, dashes, and strokes of paint to create his Starry Night. For the sky, they swirl, each dab of color rolling with the clouds around the stars and the moon. The straight, vertical, and horizontal lines of the buildings look very small compared to the sky. Dots depict the trees. How do you think the painting would look with smooth brush strokes instead? Bathers at Anières by Georges-Pierre Seurat This French artist was known for a technique called pointillism. Small, separate dots of color are applied in patterns to form an image. Colors would be blended by the viewer's eye, not by the artist's brush. This painting was completed when he was only 24 years old and captured a moment of well-deserved rest for the workers along the Seine. Surat knew a lot about dots. This painting was almost as big as a car and took him two years to complete. Besides the dots used to create the hazy scene, what other lines did the artist use to draw your attention to the people? Try this. Draw two circles. Color one with straighter wavy lines and the other with tiny dots, which took longer. We hope you had fun learning about famous artists and how they use lines in their artwork. Now, let's test your skills. Find the lines by matching the artwork with the description. There's more than one answer to most questions. Feel free to pause the video to give you more time. Here are some fun hands-on activities to test your skills with lines. Gather your paper, pencils, crayons, or paint. We hope you enjoyed learning about lines. With art goes to school.